Arsenic is a deadly poison, and when it links up with certain other elements, it can be dissolved in water. And people around the world suffer because of that. Arsenic can flow through the groundwater and contaminate wells, poisoning the people who rely on them. And that raises the interesting question. The flood was a global, catastrophic event which undoubtedly would have released enormous amounts of arsenic. Could that have made the floodwaters toxic? Arsenic is a dangerous metalloid. In fact, for some people, ingesting only 100 milligrams of the substance could be lethal. And once you've ingested it, you don't have long to live, perhaps only 24 hours. Long-term exposure to small amounts of arsenic can also be dangerous, causing gastrointestinal problems, memory loss, heart disease, and even cancer. That's right, because arsenic actually targets something like 200 different enzymes in our body, some of which are important to the replication of DNA. So let's take a look at some of this material. This is Realgar, one of the most distinctive arsenic minerals because of its brilliant red color. And it is formed from arsenic bound to sulfur atoms. And it often forms from like hydrothermal fluids, which could be present in hot springs or volcanoes. This is orpiment, another arsenic mineral. Unsurprisingly, it also has sulfur, and that's part of what gives it this beautiful yellow coloration. And interestingly, it is a secondary mineral, which means that it can form from Realgar. By itself, arsenic isn't very glamorous. It looks kind of like a tarnished metal, but it's not. It's a metalloid, so it's not even shiny. So it's really the combination of arsenic with other elements like sulfur, which generates these beautiful warning colors. As I mentioned before, one of the primary ways in which people are poisoned by arsenic is through water. But that also affects other creatures in the environment as well, such as certain types of fish, which also end up consuming it. And if people eat those fish, they can be poisoned secondarily by the arsenic. So what about the flood? In 2018, Hutchinson and Bortel published a paper in which they investigated the role which arsenic might have played in the flood. And they pointed out that the flood was catastrophic eroding away pre-flood rock layers and initiating volcanism which would have blasted arsenic into the air. So, could the floodwaters have been made poisonous by this? How would that have affected post-flood life? And can the flood even explain the modern distribution of arsenic? So first, we need to understand where arsenic is found today. Arsenic can often be found around hot springs because it precipitates out of those hydrothermal fluids. Arsenic can also be brought up by volcanoes where it can basically precipitate into the surrounding rock or get blasted into the air and then come down to the ground through rain. Arsenic also is often found in sedimentary basins which form next to orogenic belts, basically places where crusts pieces of the earth have collided to form mountains, and rain on the mountains over time dissolves the arsenic, carrying it down into these basins, and over time arsenic can accumulate in them. So could the erosion and volcanism of the flood have produced enough arsenic to make toxic waves? Hutchinson and Bortel think this to be unlikely. They point out that although the flood was eroding these pre-flood rock layers, not all of the arsenic that they contained would have become dissolved in the water. They also point out that arsenic in the groundwater may have precipitated underneath the ground, never actually making it up above into the main water column of the flood. The arsenic that did make it into the water column probably didn't stay there for long either. And that's because arsenic will readily bind with iron compounds, carbonate minerals, and other molecules, all of which the flood was either liberating or creating. So although arsenic was being introduced into the water column, it was also probably rapidly precipitating out of it at the same exact time. And then we also have to consider that the flood was very rapidly creating sedimentary layers which would have buried the arsenic deep in the ground. So although it makes for a compelling story, the waves of the flood were probably never filled with copious amounts of arsenic. 
Hutchinson and Bortel also bring up the interesting possibility that the distribution of arsenic before the flood was radically different from that which we see today. And they posit the idea that much of the original arsenic may have been in the oceanic crust of the earth, unlike today where most of it is in the sedimentary layers on the continental crust. If they are correct in their assessment, then arsenic poisoning may not have been a thing in the pre-flood world, at least for humans. And so we can see that the present distribution of arsenic is probably the result of the flood, a poignant reminder of God's judgment against sin. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe.